So, Jim, I, you know, you've talked about the Vince McMahon thing ad nauseum everywhere. <laughs> That's right. I, it should come with its own bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Do they have that over there? What do they call the pink, obnoxious liquid that coats your stomach over in the UK? They do call it Pepto-Bismol. We have that as well. Well, yeah, it should come with a free bottle of Pepto-Bismol every time I talk. But you're going to ask me again anyway, aren't you? Well, I just, I, I wanted to get Jim Cornette's predictions for 2023. So I want to get your predictions for Vince. Where do you think by the end of the year, things are going to be with Vince McMahon? Do you think he's going to be, you know, an on-screen character again? Do you think he's going to be run creative again? Do you think he's going to have sold the company? What do you see in Vince's future in 2023? Oh, God. Well, you know, my, my cohort and co-host... Brian Last, the great Brian Last, and I on the various programs that we do and disseminate every week have pontificated, as you said, ad nauseum about all the and already there's enough to have a book written just from the, from the Vince McMahon retirement slash force out force out slash you know get the hell out of Dodge and let the heat cool off period to now there's so much palace intrigue it's it's like Game of Thrones before they got so many characters and families that I lost track of who was on whose side. And honestly, the as we've talked to each other about it and, and news has come out and our opinions have evolved based on what's become public and what has happened, you know, I think it's tied into the fact that Vince sees that this is the time that if they're going to make a big sale... They need to make it. And and I'm going to answer your question in my own way. I'll get there eventually. Take the ride with me. But first, we have to understand the motivation. Think about this. A lot of people, for a long time, especially the learned pundits, have been saying that the rights fees, <clears throat> excuse me, the renegotiation it's going to be through the roof this time, boy. You know, sunshine, lollipops, rainbows, and waterfalls. But now the reality is things are starting with rights fees to cool off. The the big sports over here in this country, the NFL and the NBA, I think, you know, they're they're going to be okay. But already there's been talk that the secondary player in a game might be hurting, which is affects AEW, but now they've just released a study that the Fox network is making nowhere near back on SmackDown, what it's investing in it every week. And that combined with just the changing nature of television, Warner Brothers Discovery, a lot of these people are cutting scripted programming or they're cutting back on uh, staff and the conglomerates that have taken over. So you see, this is affecting the TV landscape. Doesn't mean shit from apple butter about how good your wrestling program is, right? <laughs> so Vince is always tuned in on shit like this. And I know I can tell you from just being around Vince McMahon, I've said this publicly, if anybody's ever going to give a check for $5 billion for the WWE to anybody, Vince McMahon's going to be on the other end of that check. As a matter of fact, I would think he'd get a big ceremony, like one of those big charity checks, about six feet <laughs> wide. And they'll, they'll take pictures of somebody handing Vince McMahon five or six billion dollars. And he may see that maybe the rights fees, because that's why they've said the rights fees are going to be tied to this strategic what are the strategic satellite defense command, whatever the strategic <laughs> alternatives that's because if they get, if they shit to bed, as Aunt Lola used to say on the rights fees, then that $6 billion valuation and sale or whatever goes South. So, and I think Vince is realizing we need to move on this and he has already been pissed off that he he's publicly said he got bad information or bad advice from people close to him to step aside. He felt he should have stayed and it would have blown over. And he got bored sitting at home calling Saudis and everybody else he could think of, getting some offers, putting some feelers out. And then he wanted to come back because he's decided the time is now to sell for the maximum amount of money. 
the board was unanimously against him returning uh, actively, but was okay with him potentially supervising or being involved in a strategic alternatives initiative. And so two weeks later, he just changed the board. And then suddenly they unanimously voted that he should come back be the chairman of the board. And he should run the sale proceedings. He owns and or operates or manipulates 80% of the company. His daughter, who just resigned, is the next family member with a major percentage, and that's 5%. And even the big investment companies that have invested in blocks of the WWE stock, I think they top out at three and a half or four percent. So he's got most of that pie and he's going to, he's going to slice that pie up any way he wants. Now, so here's the thing. This is why I'm answering your, your question. I believe that they are trying or they will attempt to make these arrangements and do this deal at least before the time would have been, would have been that they would be negotiating heavily for the rights that come up in 2024 or concurrently with. So if it happens in the next six months, well, the, I don't think Vince is going to have time to get back to creative, to the minutia of does Karen Cross need to shave his head again? And what the hell's Johnny Gargano doing on my television? I think he's going to have bigger fish to fry and he's going to be frying those fish. You might, I mean, he will go for star power. And any favor he can call in to get the ratings hot. We're talking some hot shotting as far as getting stars back. That's what Vince believes in on television. Otherwise, I think all the maneuvering and et cetera will be involved in trying to figure out the strategic alternatives, who might buy the thing, and whose television partnership they're going to be most loyal to because here's one more thing I will leave you and you can ask me the next question a lot of people have been saying especially with the rights fees in all of television not just you can't continue to shoot through the roof and they're already drooping how much is the WWE worth if because people have been making the case that okay Kenny you run inside the ropes and you pay Jim Cornette, a hundred million dollars a year to air his podcast on your Inside the Ropes network. Maybe you just ought to buy Jim Cornette's empire for five hundred million dollars, and you'd own everything front and back, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. But part of the reason why my empire is worth so much is because you pay me a hundred million dollars a year. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if 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 you ain't paying me a hundred million dollars a year and you buy me for five hundred million, where is that company that you just bought gonna make that hundred million dollars a year from? Are you owning a network gonna go out and sell me to another network? That's a great point. That's a great point. So eh, that's what I've said the the most horrifying time in pro wrestling may be upon us where they actually have to start trying to sell a ticket again. Like I had said that, I think, said, I don't think this is a good idea. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think, right? And so I just go out there and I do my job and I, and I play, I deal the, the hand that I'm, or I play the hand I'm dealt.